It's Christine again with the Artist Pod. So I know we've talked a lot about like cats and people and, and those sorts of different things, but I thought it'd be interesting to look at a hair, specifically a European hair, and sort of look at both the similarities, because there are a lot of things that we do that are the same, and the differences. So let's get arting. All right, so here is the European hair already, um, or rabbit hair already kind of sketched out. I do a lot of research when I do uh, a drawing like this. Any drawing of any animal, I do a lot of research prior because there are certain things that, you know, you don't know and you don't realize you don't know until you're going to draw an animal. And I realize I have no idea what anything looks like. But if we're trying to break it down by shape, just as we've talked about in other videos, right? Like it's kind of uh, an oval with two elongated ovals for the ears. So we have, you know, this kind of um, ovular shape here that flattens out at the bottom and then has a little dip at the top and then it's got you know the the ears coming up that are kind of ovals as well well that was a bad oval connection but you know kind of ovals into the head there and so that's kind of how you would break that down his uh, eyes are actually going to be in here so uh, once we get to it you know, it's, a, it's certainly a different um, look to the eyes than other eyes that we've done so far in this channel. So, you know, we start with that basic sketch, and then we start adding the shadows and highlights. Just like with a lot of my drawings, right, light sources coming in from this side. Um, and so we have the highlights here going into shadows here as... Um, the light hits the hits it but you can really see how that how the fur the direction of the fur really impacts how I'm drawing right because I'm still even though I'm, I'm layering all that up I'm following that direction of how I've sketched it um, and you can see that in the final product you can kind of see you know how that fur goes all right so then we're gonna add the next layer so it was uh, you know different colors which is why there's there's different layers here same thing though, right? Like we still have that, that light source and then the shadows. And this is kind of on his nose. So not only do we have the oval of the face, but we have kind of this circular section of the mouth and the nose with the light coming in and the shadows coming in. Um, and then kind of this, kind of a triangle for his nose, for his actual nose. I guess that's his mouth, his muzzle, his whatever you want to call it. Um, and then I didn't like the shape of the nose. Um, I debated on this for a while, um, and I looked at it, and I actually, partway through, I stopped after I did this, and I did more research, and I looked at a bunch of rabbits' noses, and I decided they're much narrower than what I had drawn it. And so I added this little bit down here to sort of push it down and make it a narrower uh, nose. And then we add the white. Um, and not the ears yet, but you can really see, you know, the light coming in over here, you can see how we've highlighted the cheek on this side, but on this side we have a little bit of highlight and that goes into shadow, right? Because there's more than just the, the oval and the circle of, you know, we have more than just these shapes, then we have, you know, this shape within the other shapes, um, and you have, you know, this shape within that, and sort of so on and so forth, and each shape, you know, there's going to be some of that there, where you have highlights here, shadows here, a little bit of highlight here and then shadows here highlights here shadows here highlights here shadows here right so it's shapes within shapes and breaking all of those shapes down um, still honoring the the shadows and highlights of the bigger shape of the the rabbit face then honoring the shadows and highlights of his of his muzzle and then his you know his lips or cheeks and sort of so on and so forth and making sure that each of those you know has that little bit of highlight that's what's going to make a difference with how you're you're adding those shadows and highlights and what's going to make it look a little bit more real all right and so then we start adding in the ears um and the ears kind of come behind the eye so anytime there's a lot of animals whose eyes kind of do this um, and any time they do, I try as much as possible to allow fur to pop up behind them. So I extended the ears down a bit um, more than I would have sort of initially when I was drawing it because I wanted something to help 
give more context to the eyes. But also their ears do come down pretty far. So it's, it's not that I was sort of arbitrarily deciding, but I did push them down a little bit further. The more I can get behind a, sort of the, the, the side eyes, the better. And they're also going to have a little bit of eyelashes coming in. And then we add some of that white. So this was that, that brownish color and then some of that whitish color. And then we start adding the shadows and highlights. And just like before, and you can see I left a gap here for some eyelashes um, on, his, uh, on his eye. But just like before, you know, the light source is coming in from that right. So we have the light here, um, shadow on the inside, light on that inside on this side where that light's coming in, shadow on that back side. Same thing over here where the light's catching or not catching. And then we add more of that for the, uh, for the white. Now, um, he had some black ear tips as I drawn in and black eyelashes because I didn't fully think that, you know, if I did it on one side, I had to do it on the other. And the only way to do it on the other was to actually add in a grayish color. You can see that I did that there. Um, it also added in his nose. You can see that down here where there, his nose is black and his little lip um, added in all of that. And I left, I, I feathered out the, um, the coloration of the, of the lips here into that section right under the nose because it was darker but still having some of the white of the hair coming through. So we have that sort of popping in. And then we're adding the whiskers. So just like we do for, um, you know, a cat, right? Just like we did with that, that cat video. We're adding the whiskers the same way. Now, originally, um, with this layer, I did a lot more, right? You can take a look at that. And there's little whiskers are really thick, much more cat-like. And I decided that was too much. So I backed off to a much subtler version. I really like that. It adds just enough detail without being overwhelming, because that's the trick. When you're adding in these sort of little little details like whiskers, you don't want it to be overwhelming. And sometimes, you know, while you want the little details, sometimes you can go too much. And so I thought this was too much, and I backed way off of it into this, which I thought really worked better with this composition. And then we start adding in the eyes. So we have just that, that little hint of color. And then we add in the bigger color. So, um, Animals that have their eyes on the side, sometimes they, they have much bigger pupils. Um, and then I added, you can see there, I added, like I always do, the opposite, the opposite side of the light source, right? So light source, um, again, is coming in on this side. And so I add the burst of light on the opposite side of the pupil, where that pupil would be catching that light. and then adding in the highlight. Now, what I did here, so this is the original layer. You can see both of them are ovals here, both of these um, sort of highlight flares. But what I ended up doing was cutting this one slightly. So, you know, when we're adding shadows and highlights to eyes, right, I don't often draw the top portion because it's going into a shadow. The top section of our eye will, will block that and, and cast a shadow. But the same is true when you're in a situation like this. You know, you have the actual face that would be blocking a shadow. And so all I did was take the select tool and I sort of followed the edge of that face of this line here. And I deleted out um, that sort of highlight to create the, the finished look to it. And then the last thing I did was sign it. All right, so that is how you draw European hair. I'm actually, oddly enough, um, wearing that shirt today, so you can kind of see my chosen canvas at the moment is a t-shirt. Um, I am in print on demand, so I've talked about that in another video. You know, I, I don't think it matters whether you're in, um, whether you're designing on canvas or you're designing on a shirt. It's all, a, it's all a canvas. It's just a different kind of canvas. So floating in the nether next to me, I have a couple of other videos of art tutorials I've done. So I will see you all soon. Take care.